Hey families, welcome to the final week in the theme block party for September. All month we've been talking about friendships, especially friendships between believers and how they should look. Now what we've learned so far is that friends love one another, stand up for one another, support each other, encourage one another. And this week we're talking about forgiveness. I think maybe one of the most important points of all. Now we're diving into a story today between Jesus and one of his disciples, Peter. Now, Peter had betrayed Jesus, and you'll see what happened in the story as you watch. But this is so important that we follow Jesus' lead on how friendships should work. You guys are awesome. I hope that you stay for the rest of the video. And right now, all that's left to do is grab your snacks, your pets, your family, and stay tuned. Five minutes on the other side, and I will have the perfect imaginary burger. Hey there, Haley here. I am practicing for a cookout I'm having next week, and I'm not actually cooking anything right now. <laughs> I'm inside. That would be a cook in. <laughs> so I've never really cooked for any of my friends before, so I just wanted to be prepared because I want them to still be my friends after the cookout's over. Just kidding, that's not how friendship works. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. I don't think friends should stop being friends for little things like food tasting bad. Mmm, oh, it's delicious. And I think you can even stay friends with someone if they say, accidentally burn you with a hot potato. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, ha, ha. Friendship can last through most anything. Unless a friend makes fun of my hat, then it's over. Oh, time to flip an imaginary burger. <sighs> Woo! Today's story is about a time when one of Jesus' friends did something really bad. Jesus could have flipped out. <laughs> but he didn't do that. He didn't do that. I'll see you soon. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, can't turn the camera off with the mitts. Sorry. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared he told three different people he wasn't Jesus' friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast the net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, 
Not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. Ugh. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, ten. Whoa! Need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's God's son and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lappy water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter, do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. Take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him, without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. Okay, so picture this. You have a best friend. You do everything together. You eat together. You play games together. You tell each other everything. And then, when your life gets really hard and you need your friend there the most, your friend pretends she doesn't even know you. That's not cool, friend. Wouldn't that make you so mad? It would make me want to say goodbye to that friend forever. But Jesus didn't do that when Peter pretended not to know him. Instead, even though he must have felt so hurt inside, Jesus forgave Peter. Now, I know what you may be thinking. It was pretty cool for Jesus to forgive Peter like that. But guess what? Jesus forgives you and me like that too. Anytime we mess up, we break a rule, or we do something we know is wrong, Jesus forgives us. That's because he loves us so much, and because our relationship is more important to him than our mess ups. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Friends, forgive one another. Jesus forgives us, so we should forgive others. Our friendships should be more important than our mess ups. I'm not saying it's easy to forgive. It's not. You're going to need God's help, but get this. When you choose to forgive, it can help you feel better inside. It can help your friend feel better inside, and it'll make your cookouts way more enjoyable. <gasps> Speaking of, this imaginary corn is almost done roasting. Oh, oh look at that. <sighs> oh, what? They're real. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, again with the mitts.
17, 18, 19, oh. 20. Oh. All right. Oh. There you go. Pin the tail on that donkey. Which way is it? It's right in front of you. Where? Oh, yeah, I, don't you you I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to do this. Love this game. <laughs> oh. Hello? No, no, I can talk. Oh, that just means Goldie is stressed. Yeah, you got you to gotta take him out of the fishbowl. Yeah, no, I, I do it all the time. You just take him out with your hand and hold him in your hand. Then you want to kind of kind of rub his side. Like, go, go with the scales. Give him a little rub. Is that working? Okay, well, uh, look into his eye and... Uh, do some like breathing exercises. You want to try that? Fine. Can you just put Goldie on the phone? Just put the phone by Goldie. Let me talk to him. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You a little stressed? Let's, let's do some breathing like we do, okay? Here we go. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Good. Okay, one more. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Hello, party people. Welcome to the So and So Show. I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and it's time to play Ultimate Block Party Warrior. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to Ultimate Block Party Warrior. I'm Mickey Hutch, and here with me is the legend himself, retired wrestling great Harvey the Brick Brickowski. Hey, you brought the party, Mick. I brought the warrior. Smackdown! <laughs> uh, today we have Brandon and John going head-to-head -head in a winner-take-all race inspired by some of our favorite neighborhood block party games. First contestant to complete each of the seven stations will be considered the ultimate block party warrior. Hey, let's get out to the course and show our folks at home what our contestants are up against. Station number one is the Super Soaker String Race. Use the Super Soaker to get your cup from one end of the string to the other. Station number two, Cornhole on the Cob. No bean bags here. Station number three, Soccer Ball Bowling. Number four, Carrot Dog Crunch. Have a healthy snack in the middle of racing by gnawing on a delicious carrot dog. Mm. Station number five, the 15 foot mini trike run. Station number six, blindfold bobbing for icebergs. Real icebergs! No, no, lettuce. <laughs> and the final station, station number seven, the paper sack race. What do you say, Brick? Are you ready for this? I was born ready, Mick. Let's do this! And there they go. Boy, these two guys look like they're in great shape for old people. All right, here we are. And now we've got the uh, station number one, the Silly String Soaker. It looks like uh, John is having trouble. Uh, he can't seem to... Ooh, Brandon is moving quickly. Yeah, the, the approach difference is John is losing. Cornhole on the cob. Boy, John yeah. is my, finally catching up. Mm -hmm. And Brandon... And John are neck and neck. Oh! At the, oh, and Brandon has finished. Did you finished. see that? I did. Oh, oh boy, Br John is stuck. He has the oh. the throw of a of a of a lemur. Let's cut to Brandon. His uh, soccer skills are lacking. I would say it's probably because he doesn't like soccer very much. Oh, uh, what a what a pity. Oh, look, and John's back up here, and with his first kick, he knocks three pins down. He is he's taking the lead. I've never seen a more pathetic display of soccer skills than watching Brandon perform here today. Boy, you could say that twice or maybe even three no. times. I've never seen such a pathetic display of soccer skills than Brandon performing here today. And it's still and right on cue. John has finished. He's moving on to the carrot dog. Oh, boy, it's fully loaded. That's right. He's put the carrot dog in the bun. Now he's got to put some chili on there, some relish, some onions, and top it off with a little mustard and ketchup and some spray cheese. Mm. Boy, boy, doesn't that just make your mouth water? It makes my mouth do something. All right. Oh, and Brandon finished his soccer 
Depends. I'm not sure he uh, actually did it uh, to regulation, but we're, we're just going to pretend he did. Absolutely. Boy, this is a struggle right here. It looks like John's never eaten healthy in his life. And it looks like he forgot the spray cheese and he just put a mountain of it on top. Boy, I don't know if there's going to be any uh, uh, you know, penalty for that. Oh, looks like Brandon was a little tired out. He's going to have a seat. I don't know if that's in the rules or not. Oh, it looks like he's pulling out a knife and fork. Huh? I'm not sure there are any rules in this game. <laughs> I'm, I've never heard of it before until today. He secretly finished that carrot dog. So, oh, he swallowed it. Yes, I don't know how that happened. He's going to move on to station number five, the 15 foot mini trike run. This is a tricky one. Oh, but he's maneuvering that wheel with expertise. He's moving on to the iceberg. Bob, I don't know why we call it Iceberg Bob. There's still no ice in there, man. I don't understand. Yeah, there's no way Brandon will be able to uh, catch up to John's skill. Oh, it looks like John has figured out a new technique here. He's going, he's pushing the head of lettuce to the bottom of the bucket with his face. <laughs> oh, he's always in there. He's in there. Whoa, he's completely submerged. He got it. John is moving on to the final station while Brandon is still struggling to get the iceberg lettuce into his mouth. This looks like a clear win for, oh, he ripped the bag. He's gonna have to start over again. If Brandon comes back to win this, I'll eat my own sandal. John is definitely going to win. Oh, oh! he's ripped. ripped the bag. That means he has to start over again. I know, so much to recycle. Brandon is now definitely in the lead. He is moving sort of slowly, and uh, John uh -oh. could come back if he hurries up uh -oh. at this pace. Oh, uh -oh. John is ripped. It looks like it's almost it over. It is all the way over. Brandon has crossed the finish line and won this race. And John is a bitter, bitter man. Look at that. Oh, and John's running over to the... Uh, He's still running. It's over, John. Yeah, that's right. Brandon is celebrating, uh, and not, you know, in a gregarious way. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! This is ugly. You hate to see this in sport. Block party foul. That's correct. Uh, somebody's got to step in and stop this. Where's the ref? Oh, oh, John just picked up a buttery cob of corn and threw it right at Brandon. This is, this is ugly. This is, you don't want to see this between friends. Yeah, we should stop watching this. Yeah, but I can't stop watching. Me neither. Yeah. There's nothing like watching two people who are out of shape fight. That's all the time we have today on Ultimate Block Party Warrior. Tell them what's up next, Brick. Sure, Mick. It's Bubble Story Time with Gillen. Oh, yeah. Hey, fellas. Whoa. Um, what is going on? Why did you soak me? You cheated. I did not. I was just playing you a game like your carrot dog with a fork. So what? There's the, nothing in the rules the, that says there's nothing in the rules. Is it? Okay, now okay. you're just being. Ah! Okay, 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 okay. Um, who is up for a story? Sure, Kellen. So, not sure any story can repair the damage sure here. Any story can repair ah! the damage. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. <clears throat> After Jesus had died and come back to life, his disciples went out for an overnight fishing trip. But by morning, they hadn't caught a single fish. Did someone say fish? I did, but I don't, I don't think this is really... My name is Florence. I'm a fish. And let me tell you a story. This one time, I saw a fella jump into the Sea of Galilee after 153 of my friends were pulled onto a boat by a handful of ragtag fishermen. That's actually the story I'm telling, but... Oh, how convenient. I'll help you tell it. Okay, okay, fine. But just to be clear, there were no talking fish in the Bible or anywhere. What's that? Uh, no, <clears throat> nothing, nothing. Uh, just tell us your story, Florence. All right, so there I was swimming around in the Sea of Galilee like I do most nights. Or at least I think I do. I'm a fish. I got a really short-term memory. What was I talking about? Hopefully something about fishermen. Right. There were these fishermen in a boat up there, and they'd been trying all night to catch me and my friends, and we were like, no thanks. Okay, but what happened the next morning? Well, I heard this loud voice calling from shore. It said, friends, don't you have any fish? So I popped out of the water to get a better look. I saw this guy. He built a fire on the beach. And then he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat. Yes, 
The man on the beach was Jesus. He had just come back from the dead a short time ago. No kidding. Well, I don't know much about that. But I do know that when those fishermen threw their net on the right side of the boat, something happened. My friends started swimming up from all over the place. They were drawn to that net like a moth to a flame. I was there too, right in the middle of it all. Those fishermen caught so many of us, they couldn't even pull the net into the boat. So you were one of the fish that got caught? Yeah, I was right there on the top of the fish pile. I was gasping for water, and I hear this one guy yell, it's the Lord, talking about this Jesus guy on the beach. Then this other guy puts his coat on and jumps in the water. Now, why you need your coat to take a dip, I don't know. I've been swimming without a coat as long as I can remember. The guy you're talking about, his name is Peter. When he saw Jesus on the shore, he decided to swim to his friend as fast as he could. Yeah, he beat us to shore, all right. The boat could barely move, dragging a net full of fish behind it. As we got closer, I heard Jesus say, bring some of the fish you've just caught. That's when I decided to get out of there, but 153 of my friends weren't so lucky. Oh, wow. Hmm. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm a fish. You get used to it. Um, yeah, of course you do. So Jesus and the fishermen, his disciples, had um, <clears throat> breakfast on the beach. Yeah, and after they ate, Jesus and that Peter guy started talking, but I didn't understand what they were talking about. Perhaps I can help with that. Oh boy, a talking rooster. Name's Chuck, Chuck the rooster. And I was with Peter the day Jesus died. Okay, we're doing this, but again, just to be clear, no talking roosters have ever existed, ever. Yeah, 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 okay, Kellen, I get it. I'm a storytelling device. Can I tell my part of the story now? Why not? Okay, so on the night Jesus was arrested. Wait, Jesus was arrested? Yeah, Jesus was arrested. Where you been the last month? Underwater? I'm a fish, Chuck. Valid. Jesus was arrested, and then I see Peter hanging around when this one gal is like, you are one of Jesus' disciples, are you? And Peter was like, I am not. Oh, that's cold. Yeah, but then someone else says to Peter, you, yeah, you, aren't you one of them? And Peter again is like, nope. Methinks he doth protest too much. Sure, yeah, whatever. Then a third time, someone is like, I literally saw you with Jesus. And Peter yells, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it was too much. I crowed at the top of my lungs. I thought they were supposed to be friends. I know, but Peter was scared. So he denied knowing Jesus three times. Oh, it all makes so much sense now. On the beach after breakfast, Jesus says to Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, yeah, you know I do. Jesus asked him three times. That's how many times Peter said he didn't know who Jesus was, right? That's right. And Jesus said some other things to Peter too, didn't he? Probably. It was hard to catch the whole conversation just popping my head out of the water over and over. Plus I'm a fish, so. You know, short-term memory. Okay, I'll take it from here. Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. And three times, Peter said, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus responded each time, Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Even after Peter denied knowing Jesus, Jesus forgave Peter and trusted Peter to take care of his followers. And later, Peter would go on to be the leader of the early church. And that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for your help, Florence and Chuck. You bet. I'm happy to help. Now, if you excuse me, I have to get up early tomorrow. That's a rooster joke. Okay, bye. What you think, fellas? That was a really great story, Kellen. Yeah. I love how Peter couldn't wait to get to Jesus. He literally just jumped in the water. Didn't matter that he got wet. And I love how Jesus forgave Peter. That, that must have been hard. I'm sure it was hard. 
it had to hurt Jesus to know what Peter did. But Jesus' love for Peter was incredible. It's the same love that God has for us. So when we mess up, God forgives us again and again and again because he wants us to know how loved we are and he wants us to learn to love others the same way he loves us. Thanks, Kellen. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. No, no, no I, I didn't. I'm, you you first. go first. <sighs> okay, look, I shouldn't have gotten mad at you when you sprayed me with the super soaker. I just, it hurt my feelings and I, I just wanted to hurt you back, but I never, never should have acted that way. Well, and I, I really overreacted when you won. I, I wanted to win so bad that I let it get in the way of our friendship. And, Oh, man. Forgiveness feels good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> hey, reveal the question. How do you react when a friend hurts you? Oh, there are a lot of ways you could react. Yeah, you, should, you could give them the cold shoulder. You can yell at them. Or you could spray them with a super soaker. Don't, 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 don't. I'm, 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 <laughs> Talk about <laughs> it with each other. How do you react when a friend hurts you? Yeah, and we'll see you next time on The So and So Show. That's right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Anything goes with a carrot dog. <laughs> That's a goodbye. How do you like it? Man, that's awful. Hmm. I like the onions, especially. No. 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 I can't believe I signed a contract to sell these things. It's a carrot and a hot dog bun. Hmm? But... <laughs> <laughs>